All cruisers are obsessed with weather forecasts, and the main phenomena we watch in forensic detail are the lows you'll hear them banging on about in the weather news. We had a nice little line this morning. It's eight o'clock rather than six o'clock, which is great. It's a shorter distance today, although I am expecting some kind of current to run up and down this channel. So let's find out, eh? Well, we were told that this part of the trip is rather splendid in nature, and we actually haven't even got to the proper strait yet, but already it's just uh, breathtaking scenery. It's a landscape photographer's dream, this. So we've got uh, Wabomi Island here, which is where we were anchored, just there, or rather up there. And uh, as we go down this channel, the second island, I, don't, I can't remember the name of it, I'll put it down below, uh, is where our next anchorage is. And there's a gap between the two. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. You can see there's quite a bit of weather down there. We're pointing due south at the moment. Yep. Uh, so there could be some weather coming in here, but uh, once we've passed that second gap, then we're in the channel proper. But uh, in the meantime, it's just uh, great just to t take in this breathtaking scenery. Got a couple of uh, big boats coming down. We've noticed actually in the last sort of, I don't know, 50 or so miles, how much more busy it's got with traffic. And of course, over the last few weeks, we've seen hardly anything. And suddenly we're seeing lots of AIS targets and that's because there are ports. There's a port just around the corner there and obviously Baobao, Bao, which is where we're ultimately heading before we sail across the Flores Sea, um, is a major port, it's a very big port. So uh, yeah, quite a bit of traffic. But yeah, just look at this. Isn't it beautiful? We're entering the Bouton Strait, uh, about 20 to 25 miles, depending on exactly how we take it, to the first anchorage tonight. So. As long as it stays as flat as this, this will be really... <laughs> well, it's a very grey morning as we enter the Bouton Strait. Uh, the good news is that now it's completely flat in here and it should remain so uh, for the next two or three days as we make our way south to Bao Bao. First stop is Pulau Labuan Blanda, a little tiny um, island down here, just about 20 miles away. So it shouldn't take too long to get there. We've got the tide rising at the moment and we don't seem to have any current against us, but it could change as the channel progresses. We're not really sure what's going to happen, but we'll just take it as it comes. Going to do today's day hop, another day hop tomorrow, and then we'll get to Bao Bao the day after that, uh, which is a big port. So we should be able to do some provisioning there before we head south and west to Lombok. So. Yeah, I, I can handle this. It's not too hot, not too sunny. I've got the line out, you never know. We're in about 35 metres. There could be some interesting fish around. Let's have a look. So this is the gap between Wawoni Island and the island of Boulon. You should have known that because that's what the strait is called, the Boulon Strait. And uh, of course, this is allowing that southeasterly swell that we know and love so dearly to come through. Uh, there's a bit of wind as well, so we are actually able to motor sail with just enough off the wind we can keep the head sail out. Uh, quite busy, there's a few tugs coming from different directions. There's obviously a port just over there. We've seen a tug come out, there's a few more coming up, but uh, we're staying well over the channel and uh, trying to stay out of the way. We've passed the shallow reefs and uh, obstructions underwater, so hopefully it's a straight run now to our next anchorage, um, minus the odd squall building up just over there. All cruisers are obsessed with weather forecasts, and the main phenomena we watch in forensic detail are the lows you'll hear them banging on about in the weather news. The opposite of highs which generally brings settled clear weather, a low front can cause severe rainfall, often accompanied by thunderstorms, even hurricanes. The National Geographic Society neatly sums up fronts. A front is a weather system that
that is the boundary separating two different types of air. One type of air is usually denser than the other, with different temperatures and different levels of humidity. This clashing of air types causes weather such as rain, snow, cold days, hot days, as well as windy days. And it's those windy days that can raise the spirits of any sailor or send them into a depression. Just approaching our anchorage now, and there's a lot of fishermen in little kayaks. One just raced across our bow and we realised he was actually pulling a line in. They've seen us coming. Hopefully, if they've got any lines out, they'll very kindly pull them in for us. Because they hang around quite closely because they're always very curious. And we always wave, of course. Well, we're finally in the lee of Bulong. And that, my friends, is hopefully the last time we ever see that southeasterly swell from the wrong angle. From here on in, we are now going to be pointing in the right direction, in a westerly direction. So we've just tucked in behind this little island here, which is called Labuan. A name that's familiar to us, of course, says Labuan Island off of uh, Sabah. And uh, we're just commenting on this shoreline here. It's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. A mix of mangroves and uh, large trees. Uh, of course, we had about 20 fishermen we had to go through, and they did all kindly get out of the way, rather begrudgingly. And uh, yeah, what a great spot, eh? Out of that swirl. And uh, if any weather does come through, well, you can see it all over there. It's been a pretty crappy day in terms of weather. Thank God we, um, we did our last two, three days when we did, because I think if we'd been two or three days later, we wouldn't have made it down here. This is a lovely spot. Horrible grey day of, of motoring fairly leisurely along the, the strait here, but we found ourselves behind a small island opposite a couple of little towns and lots of pretty houses with little beaches and it's dead calm. Uh, it's, it's so lovely. You can hear cock crawls crowing, you can hear some insects, I think, and some birds. It's, uh, oh, really pretty. Weirdly, it reminds me of my old stomping ground down in southwest England, the River Dart. It was a bit like this, these little villages and the odd little house here and there going straight down into the water. And in fact, parts of the River Dart we used to call the Amazon because it looked like the Amazon. So halfway around the world, reminded of Dartmouth. But yeah, just lovely. Here's to a peaceful afternoon and a good sleep tonight. Right, as I said yesterday, I think that is the end of going east. It is now west all the way, which is bloody marvellous. We're also now going in between Bulong and the mainland, which means that we will have little in the way of swell, I think, I hope. Um, there's been some shitty weather though, and I've looked at the forecast and it's across everything from the east backwards here. But you can see now we're heading towards this, doesn't look particularly pleasant, but who cares? There's no more swell. Hurrah! I think I refer to this as Bulong. I actually mean Butong. This is Buton Island. And at this point, uh, the island curves off down, so we're going to be heading southwest. And then there's a cut through, and that takes you to Sulawesi mainland. So there's another island there that divides that with the mainland, and that's where a lot of the traffic is going. At the moment, we've got 1.3 knots of current with us. We're on a rising tide, which is quite shallow. It's one of those odd ones where you've got a shallow tide and then you've got a steep tide. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when that tide turns. Um, that's the one biggest thing I've, that's always bothered me is that there's probably going to be some pretty strong currents down here because the channel gets tighter and tighter and tighter and at one point there's a little cut through that's uh, less than 500 meters wide and I've been wondering what happens when we pass all those tugs and tankers and containers that we've seen further up the coast there. 
be interesting to see, and the ferries as well, be interesting to see what happens down there, but I think that's not going to happen until tomorrow. Next anchorage is further down. Now, the thing is with this uh, Bouton Island is that it's quite shallow all the way down the coast, so potentially you could anchor anywhere, really. So um, if we get bored, we can just drop the hook somewhere. Um, yeah, it's very overcast though, really overcast. I've been looking at the weather further out uh, into the Flores Sea, which is where we're going to be heading to. And currently, it's cloudless. There's some great winds and it's cloudless, but there is a whole system that, which is essentially, it's moving with us. So I think we're going to be stuck with it for a while. Uh, maybe if we kill a couple of days at Bao Bao, it might blow past us. Whatever. It's just so enjoyable, although we're motoring, it's just so nice just to be in flat waters again. I cannot say how gruelling those last few days were. And in fact, I'd said to a couple of people online how difficult it was, and they both replied, said, oh, well, that's sailing, isn't it? And I said to them, yeah, but there was no sailing. It was just motoring. Sailing at three and a half knots, don't have a problem with that motoring at three and a half knots in crappy conditions is just it's exhausting so uh, that's probably why i look a bit tired and grubby uh, just haven't really had a chance just to sort of relax a bit so hopefully that's what's going to happen over the next few days meanwhile i've been passage planning as well once we leave bao bao that's when we go out into the open sea again but in fact there are a number of islands dotted along the way which we could call into some reefs as well which look quite interesting so weather dependent we may actually stop along the way um, also time dependent as well we are now uh, less than a month before we have to fly out of Indonesia so let's just hope we make it to Lombok haul the boat out and get out in time <laughs> It's a very grey day. Reminds me a little bit of back home in the UK. Lots of grey clouds hanging up above us and a fair old bit of drizzly rain. The yeah, main difference is of course that it's about 30 degrees here so there's not those nasty stinging little bits of rain getting in your eyes and everything. So enough of the complaining. The good news is there's no swell. Hooray! So it's flat. The bad news, no wind. Boo! So there's no sailing. But it's a gentle, easy day. Uh, some quite spectacular scenery around us. These uh, clouds and the bit of rain really make a difference when you look at the mountains and, and the way it just hangs in the, in, the, in the valleys, this misty rain. Quite spooky, but also quite beautiful. 30 miles from start to finish today was the plan, but we've got quite a lot of current with us, so we think if we're not too tired, if we're feeling fresh, the current is good and we're making good, good speed, we'll go on a little bit further. Because it does look as though you can probably anchor anywhere you like in the whole of this strait. It doesn't get too deep and the edges are fairly shallow. I have tried fishing. I've got a line out now. Nothing's biting. Not my day. But uh, I will keep trying. And changing the lures and changing the methods and we'll just see if anything at all is interested. There must be something because there are so many fishing boats out here. Uh, first squall of the day just coming across just in time as we're about to approach a whole bunch of little fishing boats and fishing stakes as well uh, so I've decided to just steer out further into the channel hoping that uh, all the commercial vessels are on AIS I can see one uh, but we're staying close enough in, we're sort of outside the main route, uh, shipping channel I suppose. But uh, if this squall gets any worse, the visibility is going to drop right down. I don't want to be ploughing over any of these little fishing boats. So, uh, And also the uh, current has dropped, so our speed has dropped by a knot as well, which is actually quite a good thing. Well, it's been a few hours of motoring down the strait here and despite the weather it's been pretty spectacular so that's all good now this is where it all starts to close up and i was looking down there thinking oh that's the gap we're going through and then suddenly as we approached it it closed and i realized that actually we are heading straight towards this little mountain range and we do a dog leg down and we start getting into the channel where it gets narrower and narrower 
so uh, it will be uh, interesting to see how this pans out because as you look at it now it just looks like a dead end. So I was right first time round, that is our gap we're going through but uh, as we've been moving around, trick of the light and what have you, uh, it kept disappearing and reappearing. Anyway, we are still going to go down to that dead end because there is an island in the middle of the channel. Now when we'd first eyed this up uh, we were thinking well why on earth would you want to anchor in the middle of the channel, what with all the traffic going backwards and forwards? Well there is no traffic. It seems as if all the AIS targets, the tugs, the cargo ships and what have you, they were all travelling further north and cutting through that bigger island to head to Sulawesi mainland. We haven't seen anything come up this way at all except a row row. So uh, we're just half an hour away now uh, from this island. It's such a shame that I won't be able to fly the drone because uh, it would be very interesting to get a bird's eye view of this whole area. But uh, this should give us a little bit of protection from this horrible drizzle that we've had all day. this boat come any closer? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Local ferry. Well, as Liz just said, thank God she took her line in because that would have gone straight over the back of it. Doesn't look particularly seaworthy, does it? I forgot to mention, uh, we aborted the idea of the island. Something I didn't mention is that all of the waypoints that we've been using are a mix of our own waypoints which we've chosen along the way and obviously doing our passage planner beforehand. Uh, but we also have a collection of waypoints which we've accumulated from various sources and uh, overlaid them onto our charts and that was one uh, by a boat called Sea of Topaz and uh, they've got quite a few rounds here. They're all about 10 years old though and when we approached it their anchorage spot said 18 meters, well we measured 22 and that had us less than 100 meters from the reef and I think as I've said before I just have a general rule 100 meters minimum distance between uh, the anchor stretched out and the reef so it just you know with the weather as it is at the moment we just didn't feel particularly happy about that so anyway we had some other contingencies uh, as I've said before the, co the whole coastline is gets quite shallow uh, as you approach it so there's plenty of opportunities to anchor elsewhere and so that's what we're doing heading down the coast another couple of miles uh, very nearly anchored here actually a little settlement here you possibly can hear the birdhouse in the background and uh, we were approaching the shore and Liz pointed out there was a kayak tied up to a mooring buoy which would indicate that there's actually a bigger fishing boat that was going to come in at some point and just don't want to anchor near fishing boats. The other thing we're trying to avoid are these, uh, you keep seeing these little jetties and that's the local ferry that will come in and out as well so we just want to avoid those. I think if we had to, Liz was saying, we would probably quite happily anchor there but there are plenty more options further down the coast so we're just going to go around the corner and see what else we can find. Well, it looks like this is going to be our home for the night. Uh, we just followed the line around, the, the 20 metre contour line. As we came around the corner, it uh, got a little bit shallower. And I was gazing over there and then suddenly we were in six metres. And uh, if you look at the satellite image, you can just about see a shallow patch. Anyway, we are now anchored in 13 metres. Just away from the main town, there were lots of um, screaming children, blokes in kayaks, birdhouse making a terrible racket and uh, if you don't know birdhouses use a recording of birds cheeping they're not real birds and it's the same recording that you hear all over Asia it's incessant and it's very uh, annoying so we've just got away from that and uh, hopefully hopefully the weather's uh, should be okay it's a bit overcast but uh, there's nothing predicted to come in so I think we should be good for the night